Let's try a little bit more of an advanced problem. Let's uh, make it a two particle system. So we have a block sitting on the table, or actually we have two blocks. And they're attached by a tension. And we have a force being applied to one of the blocks. We'll call this M1, we'll call this M2. So a problem in your physics book might be, how fast would the system accelerate? And for right now, we won't use any friction. Okay, how do we solve this problem? You guessed it, the five steps. Step one, choose a coordinate system. Since it's on a level surface, I'm going to choose a Cartesian coordinate system for each particle. And remember, you have a free body diagram for each particle that you have, or each object. Okay? So, we do one for M1. We do one for M2. Want to identify your forces? What's touching it plus gravity? Well, we see that the surface is touching it, so this has a normal force. And since you have two objects, we have to start to get a little bit talented with our numbering. So I'm just going to call this, instead of just normal force, I'm going to call it normal force of one. That lets me know I'm talking about the first block. Then we know that gravity is acting on it because we said what's touching it plus gravity. We know that the applied force is touching it. Let's try to make those as parallel as possible. A good picture always helps you see a physics problem a little better. And then we know that there's a tension pulling on it. OK, let's do it for this. Just looking at the picture, how many forces do you think you see? If you said three, you're right. What's touching it? The surface, so that's normal force number two, then the tension, and then also mg. And we're going to call this m2g, so it lets us know that we're talking about the second block. OK, we've now done step one and two. We chose a coordinate system, and we identified our forces. So step three. Break the vectors into their x and y component. So we'll do this for each particular block. Each block has two equations, so we'll end up with four. The sum of the forces in the x on block one would be equal to, I, I like to put my positive vectors first, and I'm choosing that direction as my positive x. So f applied times cosine theta of the angle that this is making with the x-axis minus the tension. There are no other forces going left and right, so I know that this equals ma. Now, I hadn't written it before, but you should know that's ma sub x. But since I know that it's not moving off the incline, it's assumed to be a sub x. But for now, go ahead and put a sub x to let you remember that we're talking about the motion on the x-axis. Now, the sum of the forces in the y are equal to, let's look at all the arrows going up and down. We know we have force applied uh, sine theta plus the normal force because it's going up 2, and that's normal force sub 1 and minus m1g, that's the gravity pulling on it, and that equals zero. 
So we know, again, the normal force is equal to m1g minus f applied sine theta. Since there's no friction, we're not going to use it, but let's just keep doing it so that we have good form, because when we get to the part where we have friction, you'll already be in the habit of working with the y component. Now, let's go back to our x component, because this is, uh, oh yeah, let's do block two first, sorry. So now, the sum of the forces in the x on block two, we have the tension, forgot to write that, and there are no other forces going in the left or the right. So this is equal to M2A, and that's in the X. The sum of the forces in the Y on block 2 would be N sub 2 minus M2G. Again, we know that's equal to 0, so the normal force on 2 is equal to M2G. So as you can see, we have four equations and four unknowns. We don't know the acceleration of the system, but we do know that they both accelerate at the same magnitude because they're tied together. We, know, we don't know the tension either. So how do we solve this problem? We substitute. And guess what? The physics is over. Now it's just algebra. What we can do is get rid of two of our unknowns. Let's just get rid of tension. So since we know that this tension is equal to M2A, we can substitute it in for this tension. Now you might think, why? How can I put this tension in for that tension? Well, that has to do with Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So block one is pulling on block two at the same magnitude of force is block two is pulling on block one. So we know that those t's are equal. So let's substitute this m2a in for that t. That becomes f applied cosine theta minus m2a sub x, which equals m1, forgot to put my one there, a sub x. Remember, <clears throat> so now we've done step four, by the way. We added like components. We're doing the substituting so we can get to step five, which is find the resultant or the equation of motion. So our equation of motion will be an equation that solves for the motion, which is the acceleration. So now we just have to get A by itself. I'm going to bring it down here, if you don't mind. So I'll bring the terms with A over. F applied cosine theta equals m1a sub x plus m2a sub x. And since both of these are a sub x, we can factor them out. This becomes f applied cosine theta equals m1 plus m2a sub x. Now all we have to do is divide both sides by a, um, m1 plus m2 to get a by itself. These cancel out, and your final answer is F applied cosine theta divided by M1 plus M2 equals the acceleration along the x-axis. This is your equation of motion. So now, if the problem gave you numbers, now you can go ahead and plug them in. You'll end up writing a whole lot less and you can feel confident that your, your um, formula is correct because you can now go through all of your steps and make sure that things that were properly canceled out, canceled out. But always write your units because writing your units is a good way to check yourself. If when you end your problem, acceleration is in units of meters per second squared. When you end up canceling out all your, meter, your units, if you don't end up with meters per second squared, then you, you can feel confident that you made an algebraic mistake somewhere and you need to go back and check something. All right, we'll get to another more complicated problem in the next video.